Hello and welcome back to Woodcrafters Corner where we talk about all things woodcrafting but not a lot about corners. In today's video we're going to be talking about how to make wood easier to carve. As a beginner wood carver or whittler if you will, sometimes you start out with some wood, maybe it's a little bit easier. Some people do balsa, some people do basswood. That's relatively easy but as you get into some of these more difficult woods to carve, oak for example, uh, the bane of my personal existence, ash, uh, as you get into those, those are pretty tough to get into. No matter how sharp your knife is, I've always found some issues there. So a lot of whittlers, especially first timers, want to know, is there a way to make wood easier to carve? Fortunately, the answer is yes, there are ways. And of course, I always recommend having the sharpest knife possible, starting with the type of wood that would be best for your project, of course. But we're going to talk today about a couple of ways that some people like to use and my personal way of making that a little bit easier. So let's get right to it. All right, and we are switching to voiceover. So as you can see, I got a couple of pieces of basswood here. The one on the left has been soaking in regular old water for about a day. And this is one way that a lot of people think would be great to make wood easier to carve. And in theory, it makes sense. But let's just see how it works. So I have this dull knife, the old timer splinter, which unfortunately comes very dull. And I'm just gonna make a few marks here in the dry piece just to give you an idea. This is our control if you will. And as you can see it cuts fine I guess but it does tend to splinter the wood a little bit and I thought using a more dull knife would be a good indicator of what it would be like since basswood is generally a so uh, more of a soft wood on its own anyway. So just making a few marks here just to give you an idea and it wasn't difficult, but it wasn't necessarily easy since the knife is duller. Now right away, one issue I didn't think of, since the knife is dull and the wood is now so soft, it kind of pushes the wood down and doesn't cut through the grain as well. But it is a lot softer, and if I used a sharper knife, it would probably be a lot easier to carve. So this just should give you an example of what we're looking at here. It's a little smoother on the softer side. But now let's try it with a sharp knife and see what we got. So right away this makes a difference even in the non-soaked basswood. It's just a cleaner cut overall instead of splintering apart and breaking off towards the end of the wood. It's a much smoother cut. And that's the benefit of sharpening your knives in case you needed another reason to do it. But here's what we're left with. Just a couple of notches. Now the moment of truth. It slices through much better than the dull knife did, which is no surprise. And it's a lot easier to cut. But it's almost too soft, which seems like a weird thing to say. But personally, I'm not used to it being this soft, and so it kind of makes it tricky to get in there with the details and make those fine cuts. Uh, because if you slip, you've made a much deeper cut than you realized. So I've sped this up, obviously, but uh, I wish I was that fast. But let's just watch, and you can kind of get an idea of what it's like. At least that's the idea. So as you can see as I'm going through this, it's just really not lending itself to detail as well. And maybe that's just because that's not what I'm used to, but if I do the same thing in this piece of wood, A, I'm able to do it a lot faster just because I'm more used to how this wood behaves when it's dry. And B, as you make cuts, it just doesn't bend and give against the blade. It kind of snaps, if that makes sense. So that's the benefit of dry wood, but everybody's different. And if you find yourself liking that one way or the other, that's totally fine. But there's the finished products. All right, so now we're gonna move on to an alternate method of softening the wood as opposed to soaking it. And this is just a little spray bottle. And what you'll find in there is a 50-50 mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water. So very basic. Then I, of course I didn't come up with this, this is an old Whittler's trick, but basically you spray it on there 
and it's supposed to work pretty much immediately. So I'll try it with this dull knife on this supposedly dry piece. And right away, I don't know if you can tell, but it was much easier to actually cut through. Now let's try it with a sharper knife. And even though basswood isn't necessarily difficult to cut through in the first place, it is a noticeable difference using this 50-50 mixture. Now this speed and uh, basically ease of use is one of the reasons I prefer this method of softening wood when it's necessary. As you can see, you just simply spray some on there and you get to cutting. And just to try out a few more details just to see how easy it really is. It doesn't soak very far into the wood, which is a good thing because then it dries very quickly and you don't have to worry about this expanding and contracting that the wood might do if it was being soaked in water. So I think that's just about enough detail for now. Let's see what we got. Yep, that's a thumbs up from me. Alright, so basswood is one thing, but that's already a softwood. Let's talk about using ash. So, as you can see, I started carving on this one, which was completely dry. And it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, but I managed to get a little bit done. And then I soaked this one for about a day. And as you can see, it's quite a bit darker, but it's also quite a bit heavier. So let's see if it's any easier to carve. Now, just for a comparison, our control, if you will, I went straight to a sharp knife. And this flex cut is just about the sharpest one I currently own. So as you can see, I'm struggling a little bit. And yes, my thumb does bend back that far, but I'm using it for a pivot point because it's taking quite a bit of controlled effort to get through this. And even just making a line, not exactly the easiest thing. So kind of hard to tell, but that's what you're left with, even with a sharp knife. So let's try this soaked piece of wood. And as you can see, it glides through a little bit better. And I'm taking out a bigger chunk than I did on the other one. But now, let's go ahead and compare. Because even though that soaked wood was easier, let's see if my preferred method stacks up against that. Right now I'm just clearing off a small piece because I want a little bit of an area to whittle. There we go. And just a little stop cut just to give us an idea. There we go. It's a shallow one because again, it's hard to get in there. Good enough for comparison. Let's try this. All right, it's sufficiently soaked with isopropyl alcohol. That is a good smell, by the way. I'm kidding, of course. Now, just as you get into this, it's uh, noticeably easier. Again, it's still pretty shallow because it's not like it's soaking all the way deep down into the wood, but th that's a good thing. By the way, just for ease of use, it's much easier to spray a few times on a carving than it is to soak it for a day, especially if you don't have a good place for it. Thumbs up. So there you have it, a couple of ways to make wood just a little bit easier to carve. Now of course, just to review, the most important thing you can do is get the right type of wood for your project, and make sure those knives are just as sharp as physically can be, because that's going to make it ultimately the easiest. But if you go with the alcohol slash water method, that's going to help a lot, especially for those situations where you do want to get into some of that harder wood, just because it's aesthetically pleasing. Now, of course, if you prefer a written overview of what this video included, be sure to check out woodcrafterscorner.com, which, as you might have guessed, is a website. And thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.